Okay, today we are going to continue our perfumery learning adventure. So we're going to look at some more naturals. Today it's the aromatic herbs, um, which is things like lavender and rosemary. Um, and these are very traditionally used in things like colognes, just very basic traditional colognes. Um, a lot of these herbs were kind of found in Europe. So people have been using them in Europe to make perfumes since, you know, a long, long time ago. Um, and at the end of the video, I'm also going to put in Narrowly um, because this is a bit of an outlier um, and I'm not sure what other video to put it into. So we're going to look at that as well. Okay, back to the voiceover. So um, what are these aromatic herbs that I'm talking about? Well, um, they are a family of plants called Lamiarche. Um, I think that's how you say it, Lamiarche, but I really don't know. Anyway, the point is, these Lamiarche, this family, um, that would be so the equivalent of, in my last video I covered, I talked about conifers, that would be the equivalent to pine or cypress. Um, within this family, um, you see all of the kind of herbs maybe that you're used to, so like basil, mint, sage, um, lavender, thyme. Um, but the interesting thing is that these are actually, or well, all of these have their own subspecies. So this might be, you know, when you go to the supermarket and you see different um, shapes of leaves of basil. Um, this is because there are different species, different types of basil. Um, the same thing applies for mint, of course, you know, that you can get spearmint chewing gum and also peppermint chewing gum. Um, also, you know, that Nirvana wrote that song about pennyroyal. Well, pennyroyal is also another type of mint. Um, and then rosemary technically counts as a sage. And you also have the interesting case of lavender in which you have something called lavendin, which is actually a crossbreeding of regular true lavender and something else called spike lavender. Um, so lavendin, spike lavender and true lavender all come under the lavender um, genus and they're all separate species. Lavender essential oil is produced by steam distillation of the flowering heads and it's one of the most commonly used oils in perfumery. Um, it's used in both colognes and fougeres. If you don't know what a fougere is, it's basically a very traditional and common perfume composition that's based around the idea of what a fern might smell like. So ferns don't actually smell, but if they had a smell, it would be a fougere, which means fern in French. So I tried four different lavender oils. Three of these were from Mystic Moments, one from Bulgaria, one from France, and one from England. And then also I tried the Payen Bertrand manufactured uh, oil, which was supplied by Pell Wall. The Payen Bertrand oil was the most expensive, but also definitely, I would say, smelled the best. Um, it was just quite a soft and sleepy lavender scent. Um, you probably know what lavender smells like, so it's, you know, it smells like lavender. Um, and then I tried the other ones. The other oils didn't smell like they were as good quality to me. Probably the French one was the best out of the Mystic Moments. That was more of a spicy lavender, a bit less soft and relaxing. And the English and Bulgarian had a few more off notes. I found lavender to be a mid note. Um, both the 10 and 1% concentrations lasted longer than a day on the scent strip, but didn't make it up to 11 days. Um, and then looking at the composition, most of it is linalol and linalil acetate. However, there are obviously other chemicals which are quite characteristic or give, helping give the characteristic um, smell to the lavender. So if you use these on their own, it's not gonna smell like lavender. Next up is rosemary. Now, much like lavender, rosemary can be used in colognes. Uh, so I decided again to use four different types or to try four different types um, of rosemary oil. One of these was a CO2 extraction, which was from Hermitage Oils, and the other three were the essential oil from Mystic Moments, um, from Tunisia, um, Spain, and France, respectively. So the CO2 extract um, is made by taking carbon dioxide, um, liquefying it um, by using the right temperature and pressure, basically, and then using that as a solvent to extract the, the kind of aromatic material out of the plant. Um, the steam distillation is much more regular um, and this is just when you effectively boil um, the, the, the flower heads in this case, it's not the whole of the rosemary, you just kind of boil it with um, some water and then you kind of collect off the oil at the end. I mean it's a bit more complicated than that but in, in essence 
that's what it is. Out of these oils, I found that the French and the Spanish rosemary were pretty bad. To be honest, they had a lot of medicinal kind of camphoraceous notes in them. Uh, and then for the Tunisian, I thought that the CO2 extraction was gonna be better, um, but I actually found that I think I prefer the essential oil. Um, and part of the reason for that is because the CO2 extraction seemed to leave this dry herbal note after a long time, which the essential oil didn't have. And also the CO2 extraction left a suspension in the liquid, which I uh, would have needed some filtering to use in a perfume. One thing that I did notice about all of the rosemary oils were they were definitely more of a top note than a mid note, like the lavender. And if you look at the composition, you can see the camphor that's present. Now, all of these oils do have a some kind of camphoraceous note to them, so they don't smell as earthy um, as maybe the, you know, they don't smell as well-rounded and balanced as a rosemary you'd find in the plant or when you're using it in cooking. Um, so all of these oils, because of that, I think probably most of the camphor are fairly strong and sharp. Um, and even at 0.1% it's still pretty strong so you could probably get away with using it quite a lot less than that and still have an effect on your perfume. Anyway so next I looked at spearmint. Now the spearmint that I looked at was again from Mystic Moments. Uh, this was a pretty good deal at only £47 per kilogram and the quality I thought was really really good. Um, so it's produced by a distillation of the flower head and this particular one uh, comes from France and it smells just like spearmint chewing gum basically um, actually at higher concentrations I would say it smelled more like the fresh leaves of a spearmint plant um, and the, the weaker you get it smells a bit more like chewing gum and when it's starting to kind of dry off the scent strip or at very low concentrations um, it's just this very faint kind of facets of, of spearmintiness. Um, and then looking at the composition, um, most of it is L-carbone. So this, I think, is the uh, constituent that is very characteristic of spearmint. Um, but then again, we have limonene as well. Um, and it's quite unclear of uh, how much is D and how much is L. So that's basically the two different isomers that you can get. Um, and then there's also some alpha planin in there which seems to be in everything, so yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so it lasted quite a while on the scent strip actually, longer than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a top note, um, but it turned out it was, I would say, closer to a mid note, somewhere, maybe somewhere in between. Um, but yeah, it definitely seems like this would be something that's very easy to overdose, um, but equally, it does seem like something that could be uh, very interesting to use. I mean, I haven't smelled many perfumes with spearmint, um, but I think one would be a really good idea. So maybe I'm gonna try to make one, who knows. And finally, we have Nerily. Now, this shouldn't really be in this video because Nerily is technically the blossom of the bitter orange tree. So maybe it should have been in the citrus video, um, but I'm gonna cover it now anyway. We also have Petit Grain. Um, this is another thing that's very closely related to Nerily. Um, this is more the branches, um, but the Nerily itself is pretty expensive in general. Um, and it's very frequently used in Cologne. And what I found with the Nerily is that uh, the first kind of 15 minutes to three hours or so, it smells like really bitter twigs. However, after that time, it becomes a lot more sweeter. Um, the floral side of it comes through more. Um, and at this point, it's almost kind of nice, kind of orangey. So I feel like you want to use this as maybe the mid note in a perfume um, and then have a top note going on top of it that would fit with that bitter twig starting point of it. Okay, so that is it for the aromatics. Um, next two videos, I'm going to cover some more woody base notes and also some spices. Um, so if you want to see those videos, make sure you subscribe. Um, until then, have a lovely rest of your day and uh, goodbye.